coming into cybersecurity, you know, it wasn't even called cybersecurity back in the nineties. Right. Like, it, you know, um, I think it's just interesting that, that, uh, you know, how you entered the field is very different than how a lot of young people are entering cybersecurity nowadays. You know, they're not, um, you know, they're not reading frack and they're not looking at, you know, bug track and, you know, all those, all those things that were, you know, I thought really like a lot of fun and, and really draw you in, you know, I just wonder, you know, for younger people that are, you know, trying to enter the industry, you know, it's, in my mind, it's, it's good and it's bad, right? It's more accessible. There's more information out there, but it's less personal. You know, there's not like a small group of people that are really invested in helping you learn um, like there were back in the day. I'm just because I'm old and like talking nostalgic about, you know, the hacker scene in Chicago in the nineties that I grew up in, but I don't know. What, what do you think about, what do you think about that? Um, was that your observation as well with younger people that are coming into the industry? It's a hard question, <laughs> uh, but I, I think in a way, yeah, things have changed. Uh, I think there will always be small community and I think they still exist. Uh, it just happened that our field is so big that the community is not one anymore. It's just few of those. And sometimes they intersect, sometimes they don't intersect. I remember the old the old uh, days as well, right? Um, one thing I can say, and I I don't know if it's very much public, but FRAC was never one group. There was a few groups, um, and FRAC started in the US. But at some point, FRAC was handed over to some people in France, some people in Germany at a different point in time. And so FRAC was never one group, right? It was a set of people... Uh, we didn't know the other group, to be honest. I know who were in fact friends, or some of it, to be honest. Maybe some of them I don't know. I don't know we know everyone. I think, I, to be honest, very few people know who created FRAC. <laughs> I do, but we're not going to say, but I don't even know if it's public. You know, and I think FRAC was this kind of decentralized, disorgan decentralized organization of like a group of people who started to exchange on, on the internet because they found it interesting. And then groups or started to create. Uh, they still exist like uh, DEF CON, you know, we have the villages, right? Which are essentially a special group of interest uh, on security. Uh, the, the election security group is very tightly run. It's uh, everyone knows them. Everyone who work on that would, would know Alex Alderman and Matt Blaze, which are kind of like the forefront of those. And, but if you go to the car hacking village, where they do a lot of things on Tesla's these days, uh, they are a completely different group. I don't know them. I do all know of them, right? And so I think they, you can get into car security very easily by entering that community. And so I think you're right. You, you do not enter the security community anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. um, in a way, depending on what your career path is and what you want to do, it will make it something harder. It will make something easier. I think there is more room so it's more opportunity because security is so pervasive. At the same time, if your goal is to be like the guy known for security worldwide, then I don't think it exists anymore. So, you know, we, we had people like this at some point. Uh, I remember Dan Kaminsky being probably the most well-known researcher, right? And he would go to Black Hat of DEF CON and the scene would be packed full and then they couldn't accept people, you know, and it still happened to some of the talk, but... The, we cannot pinpoint one person in security anymore, but that's okay. I think that's okay. I think we, we're just bigger, which is good. And we have more career paths, which means more options with different sensitivity. So yeah, I, I don't think you're right, but I think they exist the community. They're just smaller. Or as you know, they are separated, which maybe is good, maybe it's not good. Um, yeah. To there. New episodes of the Cyberwork Podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn to stay up to date on all things cyberwork.